Hello, everyone. I'm Gary Berman from DevOps.com and the host of the Cyber Hero Adventure Show. It's a pleasure to welcome you to another great DevOps.com webinar. Today, we're going to learn about why it's important to include SAP in cross-application CID pipelines and how to do so. But before we get to today's presentation, let's go over a few housekeeping items. As you see, we use GoToWebinar system. For many of you, you'll see the control panel on the right-hand side. Please take a minute to click on the questions icon and the little downward arrow. This webinar is designed to be highly interactive with our great speakers, so we welcome your questions and comments and suggestions in real time, and we'll get to as many as possible. If we can't get to your question, we'll email the replies to you shortly. This webinar is being recorded, and the slides will be available to you on demand at DevOps.com in a couple of hours. Additionally, we have a giveaway four $25 Amazon gift cards at the end of today's webinar. So stay tuned to see if you are one of the lucky winners. And now a special thank you to our sponsors for today's webinar, James Barter, Solutions Director, and Peter Yapsley, Head of Product Marketing at Basis Technology. James and Peter, take it away. Thanks very much, Gary. And thank you to everybody joining us here on DevOps.com today. Um, as you can see on the screen there, we're going to be talking about how and why uh, why it's important to include SAP in our <clears throat> DevOps approach across our IT landscape in the enterprise and, and some ways that we can look at doing that. Before we begin, a quick introduction to ourselves today and uh, I'll also talk a little bit about Basis Technologies and why we're here on DevOps.com talking to you. Um, my name is Peter Yabsley. As Gary said, I'm the head of product marketing at Basis Technologies, and I work with a lot of our customers in the SAP space, users of SAP, uh, who are looking to change the way they run and manage their SAP systems. Um, and I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by the, the most important person on the webinar, uh, Mr. James Barter, our, our solution director, who's joining me from over here in the UK. James, thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to it. And I say James is the, the most important person on the webinar because uh, he spent many years, and, and I apologize for the many years, James, but uh, you know a, lar a large part of his career working in SAP with companies who use SAP, and uh, more recently, uh, helping those companies to adapt how they approach SAP to a more DevOps type mindset. And we'll talk about that in a second. So just take a, a very quick look at today's agenda and what we're gonna talk about and run through in today's session. So we're going to have a look at why we believe at Basis Technologies and why the customers we work with often believe that DevOps professionals from outside of SAP should also care about what's happening in uh, ERP systems like SAP. We're going to look a little bit at why DevOps is different in SAP and some of the things that uh, as somebody who may be familiar with other technologies or other platforms, you might need to consider if you're going to get involved in a DevOps project in SAP. And that's going to be really the central part of today's webinar. And then we'll have a quick look at how we can get started and a couple of real world examples of companies that we work with who've adopted DevOps for SAP and some of the reasons why they've done that, the ways they've approached it and the outcomes they've seen. And then, uh, as Gary said there, time permitting, we'll go through uh, some Q&A at the end, hopefully, but we'll be sure to follow up if we don't, don't get to all the questions today. So why are we here, Basis Technologies, on DevOps.com, talking to you, uh, a DevOps audience? Um, what do we do and who are we? Well, we're a company that makes software automation that, as I've, I've mentioned already, helps our customers to change the way they run, manage, adapt, maintain their SAP systems, critical systems to the core of their business. And we're really the pioneers for DevOps and continuous delivery in that SAP space, um, providing the tooling um, and solutions that can help organizations to take a new approach to SAP. And we'll talk about uh, why that's um, a very relevant thing in a moment. So we offer the most complete DevOps and test automation platform that's specifically engineered for SAP. And that's really where today's conversation comes in because the requirements of SAP are different. And we're gonna talk about why. Um, and you need automation that is specifically engineered to work in that environment and that, that architecture. And that's what we do at Basis Technologies. We have done for more than 20 years now. We're absolutely 
SAP experts as well as um, working with companies day to day on a DevOps approach uh, in that field. And you can see on the screen there some of the kinds of companies we work with all over the world, some very, very big brands, big organizations, and typically often also very big and complex SAP estates, but also IT estates generally um, and very often uh, have a, a DevOps approach in, in parts of their organization, but perhaps not, not in SAP in all cases, but certainly in some of them, and I'll talk about a couple later. As I mentioned, um, this is our DevOps and test automation platform, really consists of two halves, two products, one called Active Control, which is essentially a CI/CD automation solution for, uh, for SAP, for change management in SAP. It's analogous to a, a kind of a almost, almost all-in-one CI/CD uh, pipeline. And Testimony is our regression testing solution which really takes a, a new approach to regression testing specifically in SAP. We're not going to talk about that quite so much today, but those are the products that make up our platform and that we, um, we provide to our customers to help them as they're managing SAP systems. So that's a bit about why uh, we're here today on DevOps.com. Um, talking about DevOps for SAP, but you uh, as perhaps people who are working in the SAP world, but perhaps not, why should you care about SAP? Why should you believe what we say in that regard? Well, I think we can assume that, that many people on DevOps.com, maybe everybody here on the call today, believes that DevOps works, knows that DevOps works, have seen positive outcomes you know, from that approach. We've got some stats here from the, the the Dora State of DevOps report last year, Dora, a company that was bought by Google um, not so long after this was published. I'm sure a lot of you have seen these. It's quite widely quoted, but you know, super positive outcomes that people are seeing in, a, in an IT regard when they're adopting DevOps, and obviously laddering that up to really positive business outcomes in terms of how responsive and adaptive they can be to the market and how, they, how quickly they can improve and learn from the changes that they've made. So that, you know, that's great. We're, we're on DevOps.com. We all, we're all DevOps advocates. We all believe it, it works, I'm sure. But however, there's a but, and this is really the point of today's presentation, is that um, that uh, penetration of DevOps, that awareness of DevOps, that adoption of DevOps, it's fair to say still has some way to go in SAP. And the SAP situation is quite different today from a lot of the rest of the IT world, where DevOps isn't everywhere, but it's definitely um, a growing thing and, and we see it in many organizations. And I think this is really where I want to bring James into the conversation to give, a, give us the perspective as a, an SAP <coughs> professional, James. Um, tell us uh, what it's like in SAP typically from a development delivery perspective compared to the rest of the world today and particularly thinking about DevOps. Yeah, I think if we look at the way the rest of the world is is developing and, and putting change, promoting change into production systems these days, um, using these much more DevOps and continuous delivery principles. And then we we look at the SAP world uh, and we see that these are not very widely adopted at all in the SAP world. In fact, the vast majority of SAP shops, and, and obviously this is a, a generalization, but the vast majority of them are still using um, waterfall type methodologies uh, and delivery techniques, um, which means that, that those releases into the production system um, tend to be much fewer and, 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 and uh, you know, it's a, a much lower cadence of change that goes in to those SAP production systems. And, you know, as it says on the on the slide there, you know, lots of SAP customers that uh, we're talking to and we work with are still really only releasing, um, you know, a handful of times a year into their production systems. Now, some of this is to do with, you know, the architecture of SAP being um, a bit different to the way lots of other applications uh, are architected. Um, and we'll talk a bit more about that, I think, as we go through the webinar today. Um, but it does mean that the SAP folks tend to be quite siloed away from uh, what the rest of the, the IT world are actually doing. And <laughs> I think maybe it's worth emphasizing because we were joking about this the other day. It's not a typo on the screen there. For people who may be used to a, a DevOps pipeline out, outside of SAP, maybe working in, in the, you know, on a web interface or something, we're talking two, three, four times a year for major you know, significant new functionality into SAP, not per day, per year. Absolutely. 
Okay, so I think that, that kind of um, highlights the, the starting point for many organisations, though, as we've said, this is changing and that's why we're here today. Um, it's a bit broad brush. We, we do come across kind of different types of organisation, which we try to sort of bucket out here in, in kind of some different profiles. So, you know, you're talking to SAP users every day and the companies we deal with. Tell us a bit about the different kinds of mindset broadly we tend to see. Yeah, I mean, the people that we speak to on a daily basis, you know, broadly fit into these two um, two buckets, if you like. Um, we, we are approached by um, DevOps professionals who have um, created DevOps processes for, the, for non-SAP systems and applications. Um, and, and now they're looking at saying, you know, how do we then bring similar types of processes uh, into our SAP landscapes? Um, so you could sort of look at that as a sort of an outside in to SAP, if you like. But of course, as you've already said, you know, there is growing awareness within the SAP community itself um, that, you know, Dev, DevOps ways of working and continuous delivery do bring a lot of business value with them. So and it's really a mixture of those two types of people, but we're actually seeing a lot more these days of the of the the, the outside in type approach where uh, you have a, a teams that are, are all working in a DevOps way across their non SAP applications. And SAP essentially is that sort of last standout, big standout in the organization. Um, and they've been tasked with pushing DevOps processes across the whole of the IT organization. Um, and of course, you know that, and they know that SAP is different. It does have a different architecture, etc. Um, but the SAP teams are quite entrenched in a lot of cases. Um, so you know, they some of them have never even thought about DevOps. Some of them want to change, but just don't know how to do it. Um, but I think we see a lot more of a push here for uh, from the outside into SAP to move to DevOps processes. Absolutely. And, and when we get to the uh, examples later on, we've got a couple of examples, one that's very much an outside in story and one that's a bit more within the SAP team and the initiative uh, that they took that can sort of illustrate what you're saying there. Um, so just to be very clear on this about why we should care and maybe why people on, on this call today who aren't so familiar with SAP um, should be aware and, and should care. Um, you know, we've got this fantastic web front end let's say in our business we need to change something uh, very quickly um, we're doing DevOps it's fine we've got a pipeline we can change the back end at pace um, you know in an automated fashion it's all great but then someone says oh yeah but we can only change our SAP systems four times a year as you mentioned just now um, let's just be clear why does that matter and why is it increasingly important well, it's increasingly important because, of course, organisations that rely on SAP systems, now these are, we saw some of the, you know, the logos at the beginning of the of, of the, the deck here. These are big, large, you know, global, multinational organisations, and they're running their critical business processes through those back-end ERP SAP systems, those sales processes and finance and manufacturing and all the rest of it. So, of course, if we want to be able to change our mobile app or our website very very quickly yeah sure we can do that with those other technologies but they are, those applications rely on data that resides in those back-end ERP and SAP systems and so we need to be able to change those SAP systems at the same pace that we want to change uh, our front end or we might want to call those systems of engagement or systems of innovation. Yeah and I mean Obviously, this isn't going to be something that affects every single change for every single person working in a DevOps pipeline outside of SAP, but but it's something that's becoming increasingly relevant. I was talking to one of our um, uh, retail customers the other day, sportswear manufacturer, that has, in, in the times of COVID has said e-commerce has become so much more important this year and the SAP team's really under pressure to support that faster cadence uh, and pace of change. Um, so definitely very relevant and and just to kind of summarize that i think we can say for these kind of three main reasons um this is why everybody working in systems that may connect to or interact with sap and working in a devops way should care about it it's first of all it's because the business cares as james has said it's because sap is really an enabler of a lot of critical processes and and i should be clear what we're really talking about today is core 
central SAP systems, these are enterprise resource planning systems. You may hear the terms ECC or S4 HANA uh, is the new platform for SAP. And this is the really where the, the uniqueness and complexity, historical uniqueness for SAP applies. Of course, they have a big product range these days, many other SaaS products and different things, but we're really talking about those core systems that enable those critical processes. And because they are so important, treating SAP differently can lead us to cost and frustration and missed opportunity across the business, not, not just in those individual systems. And, and that's because the business can't be truly agile if SAP and other related systems, dependent systems, can't all adapt at high speed together. So bringing DevOps to SAP absolutely does produce meaningful benefits and outcomes as it does in many other scenarios, and which of course is why it's becoming so popular and widespread. So let's get into maybe the, the core bit of, of today's webinar, and, and particularly for people uh, here today who are less familiar with SAP. And let's take a look at some of the key differences that we need to consider when we're either talking up about bringing DevOps into SAP or talking with the SAP team about how we can do this. Um, there are a number of different things we could look at, but we've summarized this here in, in five key areas that we're going to talk a little bit about with James in a second. So we're going to look at architecture and technology, which we've mentioned a number of times already. And obviously very closely connected to that is tooling. And that's a very central question around this DevOps for SAP issue. Um, shared development and code repositories and distributed versus shared development is also a very critical issue to be aware of connected to those other two from a technical perspective. And then we've got a couple more that are a little bit more cultural, a little bit more about people. And when we're talking about risk aversion here, we're going to talk a little bit more at a kind of an organizational level about how people perceive SAP. And then individual culture and team culture um, across the, the, the business there as well is something that we, we need to look at. So let's take those one by one very briefly and, and we'll have a little chat about those. Um, James, you mm -hmm. mentioned this a couple of times. This is really central. And when we talk about these core SAP systems, ECC, S4, HANA, for example, um, they are different. Talk to us a bit about some of the specifics about how they are different that people should be aware of. Well, this is why we could have a whole webinar just on this particular point. So we'll keep it at a pretty, pretty high level. I mean, let, we'll start off with the first one. You know, at, um, SAP has its own programming language called ABAP. Um, which of course is not used uh, in the non-SAP world. So first off, you know, we're, we're starting off with a completely different programming language just to, to, to start with. But the real key difference here is this it is all around the distributed uh, development or the inability to do distributed development within a classic SAP architecture. So in an SAP landscape, you know, a dev system, a QA system, a production system, um, these are all fully working SAP systems or fully featured SAP systems, each of these environments. And so if I'm a developer and I'm de I develop in the development environment um, and I'm changing some objects in there, the key difference here is that in SAP, we use a thing, a term called a transport, which is a container for my development objects that I've changed. And when I finish my development in the development system, that container, that transport, is then um, pulled out of the development system and moved over to the QA system and then imported into the QA system. So instead of uh, us just uh, checking a whole bunch of code in and rebuilding the whole application each time, which is how these things tend to work uh, in the non-SAP world, um, we're essentially just taking small little containers of changes and moving them from system uh, to system. Uh, which has a whole set of complexities about it. Um, and the other thing here is that we can only ever have one live version of an object in that development system at any one time. Um, and of course, we'll, we'll come on to some, some of the issues that that causes uh, from a development perspective. The other thing here is that when we talk about configuration in SAP systems, um, this is not just a bland sort of concept of you know, how an application is configured. Each SAP production system, you know, each SAP production user runs their business processes slightly differently. Yeah? And to change those business processes and to adapt them to exactly what the, uh, the, the customer wants, 
um, they use what we call configuration in SAP to do it. So we're not just talking about source code objects here. We're also talking about what we call configuration. So configuration is very important when we come to talking about changing the way SAP systems actually uh, operate. And of course, with standard SAP tools, lots of things that we take for granted in the non-SAP world, like as I say, that, that sort of automatic build of a new version of an application, automatic testing, automatic deployment of change, coordination of change, all these types of things are just not built in as standard to the SAP application and its tool sets. Cool, thanks. There's a good summary. As you say, there's lots we could dig into. Just want to touch on one more thing there. Things like um, gradual deployment, canary releases, A-B testing, you know, the automated pipeline that you often have in a DevOps world in many other applications enables you to do those kind of things for that, you know, fast feedback loops, continuous improvement, those very DevOps ideas. Um, mm -hmm. Can we do something analogous to that in SAP or do these individual systems give us some limitations around that? Well, there's definitely a big limitation around that. I mean, if I go back to, uh, to the whole idea of these SAP systems running those critical processes uh, for you know, large organizations, then essentially we have one big production system which are running all of those different processes. Um, and so if we take a change, and we push that into our production system and it causes an issue, we can bring down the whole of the production system for everybody that's using it for that global, you know, uh, global organization. Um, and therefore, you know, we have to be very careful because we have this one production system, uh, you know, how we put those changes into those systems. Cool. And we're going to touch on that when we talk about um, cultural view in a minute. So, um, so we've got, you know, outside of SAP in your average, maybe not your average, but, you know, in, in the general IT landscape, um, best of breed DevOps tool chains, very common, using many different tools, probably with open APIs that talk to each other to build up the different parts of your automated CI/CD pipeline. This chart is from Harness.io. One of our colleagues has a friend who works there made this chart. I think gives a good uh, idea of that. Lots of examples on the internet. Of course, you might not use every single tool and every single box here, but it gives a sense of what we might be used to, to dealing with um, outside of SAP. But as James has said, typically, even though it's a huge system, SAP can tend to be kind of a black box. One of our customers has described it to me as a black box that's central to their business from an IT perspective. Um, so we do come back to this kind of chasm slide when it comes to tooling and integration and the kind of things that you will typically see used, a few examples on the left of the screen there in a CI/CD pipeline elsewhere, because of those architectural differences, language differences, de deployment and delivery differences, um, simply don't work in SAP and that's one of the things that's historically um, held us back and that's of course where basis technologies support our customers um, so tooling very a very critical part of this conversation um, this is starting to change now uh, with with some tools around distributed development and CI/CD, but historically this is a, a quite typical situation and it's one of the challenges we've got to overcome but related all these things are connected of course to this idea of distributed development um, as James has already mentioned, is the problem of shared, particularly development environments, but shared environments in SAP, James. Can you dig into this a, a little bit more for us and, and the problems this causes? Yeah, absolutely. So historically, as I said earlier, uh, in an SAP landscape, uh, we have one development system which is shared by all of the, of the developers. And of course, with these large organizations, we may have multiple projects running at the same time, multiple teams trying to make changes in the same landscape. And of course, they're trying to do this across the same code base because there can only be one version of an object that's live in a SAP development system at any one time. And of course, this whole idea of sharing a code base uh, leads to all sorts of problems when obviously developers and development, development teams need to change the same sets of objects within that development system so we have this the problem of delays because if i've got if i'm a developer and i have an object locked because i've made a change to it 
then someone else may have to wait until I finish my changes uh, and move that transport, as we call it, into my QA system before they can then go ahead and apply those changes. On the other hand, if I want to make a change to an object someone else has changed, but my change is, is scheduled to go into the production system before theirs, I may have to manually undo all the changes that have already been done to that object, make my changes, move my changes into the, the uh, test system, and then reapply those changes manually that were there before I started making my change. And so what actually happens here is because of all these different versions of objects in these different transports that are moving around in SAP landscapes, then the sequencing of those transports and the different versions and understanding which versions of which objects should be put into uh, systems and how they are dependent on each other becomes a very complicated, uh, you know, it's a very complicated thing to, to deal with um, unless you have the right tooling in SAP environments. And especially moving at pace, I suppose, with that potential for error there. But there are, uh, so we don't have this concept really widely with the tools that are available. As I said, a few modern developments coming, but we don't have the idea of distributed development and branching and different environments for different sprint teams. Um, but there is a kind of a workaround, a way to get close to that in SAP somehow, and that's this idea of, of multi-track development, but obviously it's got its own challenges. Just explain to the audience what we mean by this. Yeah, very, very quickly. So this is the way that traditionally in the SAP world, we've tried to um, alleviate some of those problems of all the developers sharing a development system. And so this is the idea of bringing up parallel development and testing systems so that you know in this particular case you can see you know at least the developers are spread out over three development boxes uh, as opposed to all uh, trying to use the same one but even this parallel development idea has its own you know its own set of complexities that come along with it so obviously here as i said before all of these systems are full sap systems so just just looking at the additional infrastructure that's required here is a, is a costly thing to to just to put this type of infrastructure in place but also of course then you have to manage all of the conflicts across these uh, different landscapes and the merging of all the code in between them as well um and, you know and, and understanding how that's going to work and manage those types that type of complex uh, process as well so it does alleviate the issue a little bit um, but it's certainly not it's not like proper distributed development that we might do in a, in a non-SAP environment and just to be clear for our audience um, when we're talking about this um, we're not talking about some kind of system with uh, a, a central repository where these things can be merged back together and combined these are discrete individual systems at all times that we somehow need to align Absolutely, yeah. So once again, you know, I'll go back to that, you know, the standard distributed um, development model where we have local repositories for our local developers and then that code is then pushed back into a central repository so we can then rebuild uh, our application. These are completely distinct systems which somehow have to be kept in sync with each other uh, as the um, process goes on. Cool, okay. So let's move on to something a bit more people oriented and a bit, you know, that's a very, that's a, a technology side of it, very important automation. Let's talk about culture a bit. And, and you've touched on this already because of how SAP systems are used and what they're used for, there is a certain image of how they need to be treated that is developed in the SAP world uh, for, for some good reasons. But what's your experience of trying to talk about on-demand delivery, continuous deployment, you know, in, a, in a, an SAP context in these big enterprises? Well, I mean, as this slide, you know, very succinctly puts it, I think, you know, obviously when we're talking about DevOps and delivering frequently and increasing the cadence of delivery into production, it is just completely anathema to, mo to the way most SAP organizations are set up. Because as I mentioned earlier, that one small change going into that central SAP system can cause huge disruption to that system. SAP teams and organizations just by default are very, very risk averse yeah? because what they don't want is they don't want a small change you know, having a, a huge de detrimental impact 
on the, the, those critical business processes that we were talking about earlier. And of course, it's not, and this is where the kind of this comes in as a cultural part, it's not that this can't be done, it's that historically maybe those organisations haven't had the means to implement that control and governance and visibility that they need to do this in a way uh, with confidence. Uh, it, it, exactly. I mean, that. Yeah, I've been working in the SAP world for, as you mentioned earlier, for way too long. Um, and but you know we've we've put in these very rigid release processes uh, over the past ten or fifteen years to stop incidents happening in the production system. But of course, by their very nature, those types of gated processes tend to slow down the rate that you can actually push change into a production system. Okay, so the CFO says, don't touch my finance system. Um, but I guess, presumably, the SAP team, the developers, the basis or SAP operations teams, the QA and testers, they're all clamoring to change it every day, right? This is a, you know, <laughs> do things in a different way, change the tools, change the process, that's SAP culture, or is it slightly different, perhaps? I, 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 I would like to say you're absolutely correct, Pete. Um, but the, the, the reality is, and of course, this is a, this is a massive generalization. Uh, yeah. the, the, the reality is that most SAP teams have got a very ingrained development and you know, change and release culture. Um, they often either don't know about modern development and deployment techniques, or as we said earlier, don't think they can actually work in SAP environments. Um, and so that culture is a very siloed culture, you know, unlike a sort of DevOps way of working, and we'll get move into that, I'm sure, shortly, but you know, these are very siloed teams on the whole. You know, so I've got an analyst who creates a requirement and they throw it over the fence to a development team that develop it, who throw it over the fence to a set of testers that test it and set them, throw it over the fence to the operations team to put into the production environment. And it is quite an in ingrained culture. Um, and therefore, cultural change when we're looking at moving to DevOps processes can be quite a challenge when we're talking about SAP uh, organisations. Absolutely, and, and of course, you know, as you've you've talked about there, there's uh, ways that that things are more traditionally done in SAP, and many of those may have come about for very good reasons. You know, mm -hmm. there is historically uh, absolutely a purpose to the way these teams are working, but especially if we're thinking about this as DevOps professionals from, let's say, outside of SAP, maybe don't have so much SAP experience, this is certainly something to be aware of in terms of the kind of mindset you might come across. And of course, there are other SAP teams who are, in fairness, much more like that um, uh, uh, kind of joke I made at the start, where they're looking for more progressive ways to, to change and do things better. So let's imagine that you are either, you know, working with your DevOps team in your organization uh, or you've got an initiative with the rest of your SAP colleagues. You want to get started with DevOps for SAP, either from the outside or effectively bottom up. Let's just take a very quick look at some considerations there and how we might do that. First of all, I think in terms of where we put our focus, and I think this has maybe become somewhat clear from that previous section. Um, this idea of process people and technology is, is a way you quite commonly see um, requirements of DevOps segmented. These are some of the key areas that we need to look at. Certainly a lot of organizations, for example, that we work with in an SAP world are looking uh, towards agile as their next step on the horizon. They want to make their development processes better before they think DevOps. So we've got, and that's obviously part of a process question of how you manage development delivery. DevOps very often a, a people problem. Um, there's cultural challenges outside of SAP, inside of SAP, because it can be fundamentally changing the way people are working. But accepting those considerations we just talked about, that's not going to be necessarily radically different in SAP. You're still talking about organization, mindset, ways of working. What absolutely is different, and, and if you're thinking about bringing DevOps to SAP, the thing that you need to do specifically differently is this idea of tooling that can provide the automation you need to cope with the unique technological aspects of SAP so that you can align and integrate with the rest of your processes. But as we've said, you know, we've talked about some kind of blockers or you know, reasons why SAP maybe isn't quite where everyone else has got to, but many, many organizations more are there and more and more organizations are getting there. And so let's talk a bit about how in some of the businesses we've worked with, 
people from outside of SAP teams have made the case for bringing DevOps in there and bringing SAP into more of an alignment with the rest of, of the IT organization. We've got some specific examples and specific uh, uh, quotes from our customers as to how they made the case for adopting DevOps in SAP and making those changes in approach. Um, James, talk to us a little bit about these as, as some of the key um, justifications for making this change in in that environment, as you mentioned, where people might be saying, "Whoa, we don't want to, we don't want to touch this." Yeah, I mean, the first one, and as as we have on the, the screen, there is, you know, we we need to do things differently. We need to be able to be much more agile in the way we deliver. We need to be able to deliver the business value these these changes are going to bring to the business in a in a much you know, a much shorter period of time. Yeah. So a lot of the time here it is you know, let's what is the, the 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 case for DevOps? It's because we're going to be able to deliver that business value much much quicker using DevOps processes than we have been able to before. And also this idea of being able to integrate our SAP change deployment processes alongside our other non-SAP systems as well. So a lot of our customers obviously have SAP backend systems and you know joined up middleware systems or front end you know systems. Um, and there are changes that run across all the different technology stacks and they need to be able to coordinate the deployment of those changes across the different systems. And of course, you know, that, that then gives them that visibility across their non-SAP and SAP systems um, and that ability to to deploy uh, the dependencies between them, understand the dependencies and, and integrate when we, you know, the deployments across the different technology stacks as well, which of course means that we're going to help safeguard our production system as well. And of course, you know, these are not, these are not a be all and end all. There will be other elements, um, you know, quality, however we define that can be one as well. Um, and when we talk about security, you know, that's very general there, but having, for example, the right automation that can enable you to back out a change of an SAP production system, you know, perhaps a very standard thing um, in other applications where you can deploy uh, a different branch or a different um, part of your master branch into production. If you have problems with the thing you've just deployed, you can, re you can roll that back very easily because you've got that typically Git-based version control system. And, and in SAP, we don't have that. So being able to bring that kind of thing in and then align with that speed and integration can be the kind of arguments that can help to make the case and make the story for um, bringing these new approaches into DevOps. And you may find that the SAP team is absolutely on board with this, champing at the bit. Um, but equally, if it's a little bit more difficult and tricky, these are the kind of conversations that, that might help. In terms of something a, a little tangible, of course, this is very high level. On this slide alone, as James has mentioned, on the Basis Technologies webinar, we, uh, Basis Technologies website, we have a, a whole webinar on this topic alone. How could we get started with DevOps for SAP? What steps could we take? I think actually, James, you might have run that one yourself. Um, <laughs> Probably have. <yes. laughs> <laughs> but just just give us your. We put your kind of five five bullet point summary on the on the screen here. Is like okay, well, if I'm going to start somewhere. Where can I start? Talk us through these five bullet points. Well, well, I think the first one's pretty obvious, isn't it? We've talked about, you know, the the, the SAP organisations tend to be quite siloed away from the rest of IT, um, and the first thing we need to do is we need to start that collaboration and that discussion between those two teams to see where the real benefits of moving to DevOps, you know, really are, and 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 you know, how do you start with DevOps? Well, you start small. Yeah? Uh, and the idea here is that we pick a small project or whatever it is. Um, we, if we run our DevOps processes, we'll have the right KPIs and metrics out of the end of it that we're measuring. So we've got some um, empirical evidence to show the business and show the rest of the IT teams how much better this way is of working uh, than the way we used to work. And of course, how those teams are set up is very, very important in a, in a DevOps uh, process. Uh, so we, we need to start restructuring those silos, taking people out of their silos and forming cross-functional uh, teams that are focused and responsible for particular business 
outcomes. So, you know, instead of you know, either an analyst throwing it over the fence to a developer, throwing it over the fence to a, a, a tester, we want all those same people to be um, together in a cross-functional team, um, you know, talking every day, understanding where the blockers might be, what people are going to be doing that particular day, these, or the idea of stand-ups and retrospectives and all the rest of it. Um, but the real point here um, is that those teams are focused around business outcomes, yeah. not say, I'm just a developer, and once I've done my development, that's it, thank you very much, I'm finished. Yeah. And of course, to be able to do this, we need the right underlying technology, because if we're going to start moving faster and trying to deliver faster, but with quality, as you quite rightly said, Pete, that we need the right automation technology to underpin this whole this whole end-to-end -end process. Otherwise, it's just not going to go anywhere. And of course, this then gives us that ability to, as I've said before, to integrate those SAP and non-SAP system changes together so that we have a full end-to-end -end, um, in SAP, we call it a requirement to deploy process um, across all of our different technology stacks so we have that visibility across those technology stacks and as i say you know we we can deliver that business value faster and with higher quality than we could before yeah great thanks and and of course you know each one of those steps is not necessarily nearly as small as that one line we've got on the slide here and of course this is not some of this is not necessarily unique to sap but in our experience with the organizations we've worked with this is a uh, a kind of fairly commonly effective five-step plan in terms of starting with the people moving to the tools and then spreading it out from there so just to to round things off a little bit um you know we see despite some of the challenges we we have talked about and things that we need to be conscious of when talking about devops for sap that it is effective it can be done there are organizations that are doing this um, and seeing real benefits today. And we're seeing the kind of benefits that we might expect from DevOps outside of SAP. So I started with that Dora slide from their state of DevOps report with you know, the faster deployments and fewer failures. And we see similar kind of outcomes amongst our customers who are using basis technologies automation solutions as part of a DevOps approach. So much lower costs, much greater efficiency in terms of manual effort reduced, um, much faster innovation and we'll, you know, there's, we're talking about things like going from that two, three, four times a year deployment to production that James mentioned at the start to weekly or daily in SAP systems um, with much less risk of failure. So really a big difference, really analogous to what, what we can expect and see elsewhere, but just done in a slightly different way with a slightly different approach that accommodates the uniqueness of the SAP technology and teams involved. And to, to emphasize that, we'll take a very quick look, just for five minutes before we finish now, at a couple of examples of the companies that we're working with and what they've done in this regard. So um, <clears throat> we'll start with, with Ericsson. Um, and I should say, before I begin with both of these, if you're interested to learn a bit more, there are more detailed case studies of both of these on the Basis Technologies website. But talking about the outside-in approach that we talked about we're at the very beginning in terms of the, the kind of people um, that we're engaging with, um, Ericsson was very much that kind of business driven DevOps project, DevOps adoption. For whatever reason, a few years ago, um, DevOps wasn't as, as widely, uh, hadn't penetrated as widely through their organization as in some others. And they recognized that they wanted to change some of the ways they were working in IT to make them more responsive to the market and to their customers. And some of those things you can see on the right hand side of this slide were the goals that they had at organize, as an organization. And they set out a a multi-year plan to do this across all of their enterprise applications that run their business. And they they found relatively quickly that SAP was falling behind and becoming a blocker because the processes they were putting in place, the tools they were putting in place simply didn't work as we've described. And they hadn't realized at the beginning that that, that was gonna be quite as extreme as it was in, in how that would pan out. Um, so SAP was holding them back and they needed to find a solution to work around and align SAP with the rest of, of their application development so that they could achieve these business goals. And they put in that product I mentioned at the very start of the presentation, Active Control from Basis Technologies to support that change. And in doing so, they took the approach that James has mentioned of an what we call an N plus N, 
and in their case, N plus 10. So they had 11 separate SAP development systems, individual development systems and QA systems, which they then had to rationalize and coordinate all changes across before they can deploy things safely to production. Or when they have made deployments to production, make sure all those systems are updated correctly so there aren't problems in future. And active control was what enabled them to do that. And they took that approach because basically what they said was, well, each, each N plus whatever is a sprint team and they're going to work independently. And this is how we're going to manage those separate bits of development that align with our sprint teams outside of SAP. Um, so it enabled them to work in a more agile way using that SAP automation to not, it's not quite the same as distributed development. It's not the same as Git, you know, based approach, but it enabled them to, to make an analogous process. And what Active Control also let them do, which was really important for Ericsson, was connect their SAP change management process to GitLab, which is their central CI CD tool that also connects to some of the other DevOps tools they're using outside of SAP. And that was their central point of visibility, central point of coordination in terms of when deployment should happen. And in doing so, they're able to massively streamline their, their enterprise-wide uh, IT deploy software deployment process because everything is coordinated and controlled from the same place and SAP wasn't holding it up by being separate with manual processes, with, with broken manual communication. And as you can see, what that let them do is pretty much move to an on-demand delivery of SAP change. They were able to deploy whenever they wanted to. I think they settled on a one or two week cadence in the end. Um, but, but critically, it let them achieve their business goals of a faster response to the business overall and to their customers because they had an integrated multi-application uh, delivery pipeline. And then IPG was a slightly different case. Now, IPG is into public group. They're one of the world's biggest uh, advertising companies. You may not be familiar with the name. They're not a household brand as such, but they are a multi-billion dollar company. Um, that owns a number of you know, fairly famous uh, advertising and marketing brands. And they have dozens, maybe even over a hundred now of individual companies that they serve as a corporate entity. Um, and so IPG runs, for example, finance systems in SAP for these many, many different um, internal clients. So great demand on them as a team to support the different requirements of internal customers in different markets, with different legal requirements, with different market dynamics, um, you know, looking to be more agile, more responsive, and at the same time working in a very disrupted industry. Advertising has become extremely digital. Data is a huge part of it now. New entrants like Google and Facebook, I say new relatively in the context of this business, but um, having a massive impact. And so IPG and companies like them have really had to change. And the SAP team recognized that and said, we want to work in a more progressive, um, more adaptive way that can help us to serve our clients and the market better. And they did that by taking active control to help them start with, as James has mentioned uh, just now in the Getting Started tips, started with a small DevOps project within SAP to try and prove that out and, uh, and, and establish that, the, that it could work. Um, and it could be a practical approach for them. And as they've scaled that through a number of different projects, broadening the scope of their DevOps project in SAP, they've been able to move from twice a year releases to weekly SAP releases. So obviously, as we've said, you know, massive change in responsiveness to the business there, as well as the kind of typical benefits we'd see from DevOps, like a lower cost, higher quality, you know, greater visibility, um, and and all those all that good stuff. But the real key for for IPG was to be able to move SAP to a point where they could be more responsive, more effectively to a really quite challenging market. So a couple of examples there, as I've said, more details on both of those on our website if you're interested in learning a bit more about, about what happened in those organizations. So just to wrap things up, particularly considering that James and I are here with you on DevOps.com today, why should DevOps professionals who maybe don't work in SAP, don't know about SAP, care about it? Um, well, we would, we would say there are a number of, of good reasons. Um, first of all, and maybe a little bit more business oriented than personal, but that strategic alignment, the idea that SAP is no longer an island is, is really central and can be really important to positive outcomes. Um, if we can bring DevOps to SAP or SAP into the DevOps fold, we're probably going to have 
happier business users because we're gonna have more visibility, faster delivery, you know, taking for example, that IPG case I just mentioned as a good uh, example of that. We're gonna have more satisfied end users, more satisfied customers because we're more responsive to what they need, you know, classically like DevOps anywhere else really. And that's gonna give us greater business competitive and success, which of course is, is, is what we're all after at the end of the day, we're all in business. Um, we do see an element as well of, of a bit of personal reputation there sometimes in the organizations we work with because there is often a question, maybe after the event, of why did nobody do this before? You know, it is absolutely possible if people believe it's possible and come at it in the right way. And of course, part of the uh, reason for asking that, oh, why didn't we do this before question is because once we're there, people recognize how much better it is to work in this automated, integrated way and how much more satisfying their working life can be, which is you know, commonly regarded as one of the positives of DevOps, of course. So just to wrap that up, um, what we covered today, um, we believe DevOps professionals should be considering SAP because it can be a real benefit to the businesses that, that they operate in. Um, both DevOps and SAP teams can benefit from greater collaboration, from working more closely together and from trying to align, typically align SAP more closely with what's happening elsewhere. That standard DevOps approach, there are elements which are similar or the same in SAP, but you can't cut and paste. Um, it's not the same. And it's particularly the architecture and tools and somewhat the culture and the mindset that are all different in SAP. But it is achievable. Uh, we've been through those couple of case studies. There are tangible benefits of doing it, and customers definitely are more and more organizations, uh, companies are starting to make that move to adopt DevOps and SAP and have an interest in that. And if you're uh, a DevOps professional in an organization that, that uses those core SAP systems, we'd certainly recommend that you ask around and see what's happening in your organization um, and what the plans are there. Um, and so final thing, if you would like any further information on what we've talked about today, if you're interested in these topics and you want to dig a bit more deeply, of course, you can visit us at basistechnologies.com. Uh, lots more information there. You can also get in touch, request a demo of our products, um, or you can contact James directly, particularly if you have any more technical questions we don't get to today using the details on the screen. And for the few minutes we've uh, got left, I'll just hand back over to Gary and say thank you to everyone for your time joining us today. Thanks, guys. Well, thank you so much. That was incredibly interesting. And we have a ton of questions. Um, and um, just so our audience knows, we'll make sure that uh, we uh, track your questions and they'll be able to get back to you. Um, if not right now, then uh, you know shortly. Um, so in your experience, how long does it typically take to, to get DevOps running in SAP? Oh, right. Now that's an interesting question <laughs> because it, it, it is a process. Yeah? I mean, we're moving, we tend to be moving organizations from a very manual waterfall type methodology to, um, to uh, you know, a much more continuous delivery methodology. Um, and, and as I always say to people, you're not going to just wake up one day and say, we are now DevOps in SAP. Yeah, this is a journey and that journey is going to take a, a, a you know, a, a, it could be a, a number of years, it could be a number of months, it depends on the organization itself really but of course what you really need as we've we've been saying is this if you have the foundations right when you start as we say when we start small as we've already said and you have the right foundations and the right tooling in place and the right processes in place um, then of course you can shorten that period of time um, quite considerably uh, as you roll those much better processes out over the the uh, the, the, the whole of the sap teams and um, just to build on your uh, journey analogy, are there any quick wins you know that uh, someone can get uh, as they work towards DevOps, you know, within the SAP environment? Yeah, I think I mean really a, a lot of the problems that SAP development teams have currently, um, even you know, working in a waterfall methodology, are quite similar to to the, to the same problems they have when they're when they're moving to to a DevOps process as well. So once again, if you, it's having that under, you know, underpinning automation and the, and the process automation, which can then move with you as you go through that journey, uh, is really key to being able to you know, go from where I am and, and I can get value now from some of that automation tooling, 
uh, in, in the way I'm working today, but also I'm going to get a whole load of, of um, additional value from it as I move to these more continuous delivery processes. And, you know, what do uh, folks need to know about containers and their potential, you know, in order to accelerate SAP development and testing? Well, <laughs> once again, this is quite a big topic. Yeah? And the idea of containerizing SAP development systems to allow much more distributed uh, development techniques to be used is something which we are certainly uh, working with internally ourselves. Um, and it's where we're working through how that works, maybe a Git-based type process um, and distributed development um, to, to see what those best practices might really look like in an SAP environment um, and how they integrate very well or could integrate very well with um, the sort of the non-SAP DevOps processes as well. So um, containerization may well have a big place to, to play here. Um, and I think it's something that you know, a number of organizations are looking at. We're certainly um, you know, looking at it internally and seeing how that can help us with, with developing our tools internally. And can you really you know, do DevOps successfully in a single dev environment? Well, it, it's, it's not ideal <laughs> is the answer. Um, and that's why, you know, in, in, uh, in, in traditionally in SAP, uh, SAP customers have brought up these, you know, multiple development systems to try and alleviate that problem. And of course, this goes back to that previous question really around containerization, because if we can containerize an SAP development system, then there's essentially no reason why we can't have one development system per developer like you would do uh, in uh, most of the other non-SAP technologies so yeah i mean it, it it's not easy but that once again you know it, it's it depends on the automation tooling you have in place to how easy or difficult that really is in practice and so and which side of sap are you primarily focusing on on-prem or is it more cloud or a combination yeah i mean it's it's both really i mean obviously as pete mentioned earlier there are, um, you know, SAP have a, a whole range of different applications, some of which are SaaS products, uh, some of which are more on-prem or can be run on-prem or either in the cloud. Um, so there is a whole sort of mishmash of, of different technologies in, in the SAP world. Um, and the ones we're talking about here, I think, as, as Pete mentioned earlier, are the, the sort of big ERP backend systems, the ECCs, the the, the S4 HANAs, SRM, CRM, these types of things. Um, so, and, and whether those are actually hosted, you know, on the cloud or hosted internally, it, it doesn't really matter. It's applicable to to to, to all, really. Well, uh, I'm sure our audience would like to go on and on, uh, but we're at the top of the hour. Uh, this has been just incredible. Thanks so much uh, to you, James and Peter, um, and uh, on behalf of our audience for all the uh, years of uh, expertise that you're sharing with us. It's incredibly valuable. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we uh, have four lucky winners for today's Amazon gift card giveaway. Uh, the winners are Amber P, Elaine W, Robin B, and Rosemary V. And um, somebody uh, from the DevOps team will send you an email to confirm your email address and get you the gift card uh, promptly. And as I mentioned, this webinar was recorded and the slides will be available to you on demand at devops.com in a couple of hours. And we'll be sending you a link to the slides and recording as well. So thank you all so much for spending an hour of your valuable time with us. We truly appreciate it. And we look forward to seeing you on the next devops.com webinar. In the meantime, stay safe and be well. Thanks very much. Bye.